So we're looking at more kind of nutrient dense plant foods, which are, you know, full of like an abundance of minerals and vitamins and micronutrients and just an abundance of like different benefits, which I, I, I would say I would consider uh, myself as like a, a gold standard in comparison to like, you know, multiple other dietary patterns. However, I, I think you'd probably get pushed back again from like, let's say the the animal based community at the moment, that seems to be a giant rise at the moment, because they're like, oh, I can get like all the vitamins and minerals I need by eating, you know, a, a steak, for instance. But we also know that, you know, just because you can get it all in one food it doesn't always mean it's going to have the best health outcomes. Um, and I think that at the moment, there's no, a there is a giant rise get- with the carnivore. No, no, those things are just silly. I mean, you don't get phytochemicals and antioxidants. I mean, we know that the what sports immune function against cancer are things like, including the bacteria that line the gut. When you're eating a diet with more meat, you're putting more un- more bacteria that produce more inflammatory compounds in a more acidic environment. As you know, it's called TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, which is formed from the bacteria that we need a lot of animal protein. But the I'm saying that we eat salad like leafy green vegetables, including leafy cruciferous vegetables like kale or bok choy, arugula, cabbage. When you eat the mixture of lettuces with those green vegetables, you support the microbiome and you support the intraepithelial lymphocytes that line the digestive tract to build up immunity against um, foreign invaders and against abnormal cells becoming cancerous. And then when you use sprouts and you use onions and mushrooms and scallions in your diet too, you also support immunity so your, your immune system strengthens itself from a lot of diverse exposure to phytochemicals that are not present in animal products. So we have to have a robust assortment of these phytochemicals. And I'm saying, yes, the, from the raw onion and the raw greens, as well as cooked beans and lentils and cooked mushrooms, gives you a new pattern of bacteria in the gut. And it's the reason why the people like, like carnivore diets, as some people like that, it's because they want to avoid the phytochemical richness of the plants. Because the phytochemicals can, because when you have, when you've been, when you have an unhealthy microbiome and you have a leaky gut that's developed due to years of eating processed foods and fast foods, you could damage the gut lining and your body becomes, becomes more inflamed when you have more, when a higher exposure to certain plant compounds, particularly phytochemical richness and even some of the compounds and beans that people aren't digesting well. So some people, because they've earned their unhealthy gut status, they feel better when they don't eat plants. And there are some indications where a person might feel better or do better on a carnivore diet. Like for example, if you keep in ketosis, it may help a person with schizophrenia who have brain problems, you know what I mean? Because the chronic ketosis is acting like a drug on the brain, like a toxin to the brain that prevents um, and, and also, um, there's a, uh, some other indications like people with seizure disorders who are not being able to control with drugs, being in chronic ketosis can, may help control their seizures. So because of the toxicity, the acidity, and the form of ketones, the ketones can act on the brain in a manner to make some people feel better emotionally if they have those med- mental problems, or even to make them feel better if they have a certain um, autoimmune stimulation that's coming from plant lectins and plant phytochemicals because their gut's been, been harmed. But, okay, so putting those rare instances of sa- aside of a few people who do feel better when they eat animal products a lot, it's still going to shorten their lifespan. It's just like smoking cigarettes to lose weight. It's still, we know that we have to, we, we, we don't put people with epilepsy or seizure disorder, preferably on a keto diet to control their seizures. We prefer to give them drugs because we know that long term on these keto diets is weakens their bones, increases the risk of pneumonia, increases the risk of early life death. And, and it's, a last, it's a last resort for these people because we know it's a, such an unhealthy way to live long term. And the studies have borne that out now. We have long-term studies on people following keto, um, high animal product diets, um, numerous studies that show that it increased risk of early life death, even if people are losing weight from or getting into diabetes better control from keto diets. It's much more favorable to longevity. And if you could gradually get a person to acclimate to the wide diversity of fibers and phytonutrients present in plants, and then we also control their autoimmune conditions and get them well from their rheumatoid arthritis and their asthma and their lupus and their psoriasis, even though asthma is not considered an autoimmune disease, mm-hmm. it still reacts to the same. Um, it still reacts to the same dietary yeah. pro- uh, issues. So I'm saying 
I can get people well from those conditions without excluding this wide variety of plants, even if they're so somewhat getting inflamed from certain plant materials, it's because we can build back the gut flora and build back the, um, the endothelial lining of the gut, and we can build back better health and immune function, and they can get well. And my career has been um, largely, um, you know, proof of the fact that we can have people make full recovery from asthma, from psoriasis, from lupus, from rheumatoid arthritis, from scleroderma, from connective tissue disease, so that these people with autoimmune disease do get better, and that we see um, people with cancer living longer, um, surviving um, their cancers, and even getting reversal in early stage cancers. That in almost any disease we want to treat, we get better results, and there's no scientific data that show that diet higher in animal products gets more efficacy at disease reversal control. It's definitely the case that the type of nutritarian diet I'm talking about gets more benefits for lowering blood pressure, for lowering cholesterol, for reversing diabetes, and for accelerating weight loss, and also for extending human lifespan. So I think there's an overwhelm that the data does not support, that they don't have the scientific um, data to support those, um, I, and I'm considering them fad diets that appeal to people's desire to eat a, a diet rich in animal products. Yeah, I think as well, like when it does come to those like very extreme, especially the carnivore diet, there there is no studies out there to kind of, you know, like prove these claims that they are making because they are a lot of anecdotal stories um, and there's, obviously there's not been any kind of like long-term study on these <laughs> On these dietary well, we do have we do have long term studies on people with high meat diets. We do, and it shows they die young. I mean, I have a there's one there's a study that went on for thirty years that plotted um, the people's risk of cardiovascular death in direct proportion to the percent of animal products in their diet. And so, I, I've published, I put out a lot of those studies in my books and my materials that we do have those studies, and it shows that a diet high in animal products means to means to shorter lifespan and more cardiovascular death and more all cause mortality. You know. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. studies now on keto diets showing that when you when you reduce carbohydrate below 30% to get into ketosis, it increases risk of early life death. So those studies have just come out in the last three or four years, and they do show reduced lifespan in those dietary, in, in, you know, in those dietary fats.